Allowing Kanavi to get the type of pick that he shines on. Are they going to go? So Kalista uh, plus Renata is available, and they go for the double poke lane with the Ash not being banned. Caitlyn Ash here, so much poke power, so much pushing power for bottom lane. I want to see if they try and like attempt to uh, still pick the short range Kalista Renata into it and try and get some ganks off, try and get uh, some pressure there, or 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 opt to also go with a double poke. And I want to reiterate, rulers Kalista was banned for years in the LCS. It didn't matter whether the champion was oh, better. Baby. He was just not allowed to play it. He even faced into a counter matchup on the Ash, which obviously has a really good matchup into this. Still going to trust himself, trust his mechanics, and trust his lane partner to try and get a lead there. And I think the sad thing for Rulers, if you look at the previous game, it wasn't really about his proficiency in the 2v2. He had no lane prior, trapped under his tower, couldn't find an angle into a fight. And it's a similar story for missing on the Alistair. A lot of these uh, aggressive engages just not paying off. So see if this will be a different story with the Callista, with the Comfort pick, with almost a signature pick, backing him up here. The Vi now coming out as well. Again, safe, pretty standard jungle pick, but T1 opting to mismatch here. Not gonna pick a jungler. We'll lock in the Azir for Faker, see what they end up getting for owner as we get later in the draft, and what JDG can secure for missing in the bottom lane. Yeah, I kind of I kind of actually like JDG jumping on the Vi pick here to combine with the Orianna ball for the delivery system back to the double uh, low mobility AD carries to the side of T1. But it does mean you're going to drop your support pick here, and you guys are talking about missing. Uh, he's going to receive several extra bans here. The Nautilus right off the top of it here. They're trying to take away more of that hard engage to protect their back line. And Gwen here signals maybe a Cassante for 369. He really struggled in the previous game. Can also look towards the Orn because I do think that that is one of the uh, tools that can really frustrate these uh, low mobility but really high power bot lane carries for Gamusha and Carrier. Blitzcrank also taken away shouldn't be a surprise uh, given that neither of them really have a good way of dealing with it. And you can snowball the lane very early on if you land some key hooks. What is the blind pick here for T1? Presumably just jungle. Save counter pick for Zayas on the top side of the map. Really taking their time. Again, quite champion pool was a question points. for owner, but uh, he's shown I mean, it goes they, pretty deep they, these days. Yeah, they could do. Oh yeah, much up. The Maokai <laughs> is up. The Sejuani is up. <laughs> oh yeah, just that incredibly high priority champion we've seen the entire tournament. Yeah, it will be the Maokai locked in, combined with the Hawk shot, combined with the Yordle snap traps. It is going to be impossible for that JDG. Means, that means they might do Zeus with a with an AD top laner there, like Jace or something like that even. It is early into the Cassante though, so oh. Jack's angle available. Senna. The Senna plus Callista lane here to try and deal with the poke Ash Kate. And I think a lot of the reason that we've seen Senna be successful in this tournament is because she goes into relatively low range opponents. Things like the Kaiserel. Both Ash and Caitlyn have good tools to contest Senna's soul stacking in the early lane phase, but have to hope that JDG have something special prepared here. Uh, Aatrox uh, seems to be the no-brainer here. Zayas, I'm sure, is going to go Lefaldi, even facing Cassante. But I think the main thing with Senna and Kalista is that their level one is absolutely nuts. And I'd expect this to go back to what we saw in the LCK in Spring countless times out, where literally it just, you heal level one, you just fight to the death, fight over control of the wave, because whichever of these two lanes gets ahead is going to have a really easy time to, from then on, keep their opponents on the back foot. I'm excited for this one. Karia is the master of these double AD bottom lanes. So this is going to be a fist fight down there. And with T1 one game ahead, now on red side, we know what JDG is likely to pick in the next game as well, pushing T1 back there. You have to hope, if you're a JDG fan, that JDG can show us more, that they can match more, because if T1 find the same advantage that they did against LNG with these incredibly aggressive bottom lanes, as a blind pick this time around, that is a big red flag as we get deeper into the series. And this JDG comp does need to stack those dragons to be able to get that win con there for them, make use of the rend to secure it. Oh my goodness, so much pressure here on. And, and talk about pressure, 369 needs to have a better game on the Cassante. This is something that obviously we talk so much about the journey of this player, going from someone that could only play carries to someone that, and we saw this both domestically and at MSI, is or was, is the best tank player in the world, right? The way he's able to <laughs> I create... Love how, I love how Zayus is like making you question it now. I mean, like, wait I'll, a second, a I couple mean, of series here. I mean, 369, I don't think has had oh. the best tournament thus far, right? So I think it isn't unreasonable. Having a big Cassante game here, though, is going to be pivotal 
And I'd expect him to bounce back the way the JDG have done countless times throughout this year. We'll see if he can do it, but in the meantime, his team's set up their level ones. Remember that you can log into your Riot account on LawEsports.com and watch Worlds Live to earn exclusive Worlds emotes and icons. There it is. Bam. LawEsports.com. Get those drops, folks. And let me remind you, this JDG team, even though they got blasted in game number one, this is the quintessential super team. When they added Knight and Ruler to this squad, two of the best carries in the entire world here, their goal was to complete this golden row from the very beginning. This is constructed. This team is constructed to win the entire thing, and they've done so much work to get to this point. He won, though. Faker said <laughs> all roads lead to him, him trying to stand between them and that huge achievement. Karia on the level one is going to lead the way with the Ash. Thing, taking so much damage. We're now Nine. continuing to free fire to Karia. Karia has to be careful. Will he be forced to flash over the wall for now? Standing strong. 369 on the backside has popped the Ghost. One Q stack going, but he can't really find an angle in. Has to be careful. Third stack missing incredibly low. Q through the creeps, trying to pick up some souls. Owner getting lower and lower. 369 for Zeus up to the He's side. But owner <laughs> getting burned down. Down, owner level two, he flashes in. They get first blood, it's traded back. Knight running for his life now. Two kills to the side of T1. And T1 win the world championship, A-Ram. Whoa! The level one A-Ram goes two to one in the favor of T1 securing first blood. We already had the Scream World Championships. Now we have the A-Ram World <laughs> be, Championships as fair, well. It is a raw. it is all random, all yeah. rafters, okay. not mid. Kobe, just <laughs> technically, just to and, be fair. Uh, and and the, the funniest part is, it is the Raptors that actually solidifies it, because the moment that owner hits two, T1 feels the confidence. And I understand that JDG, feel uh, confident to take this because again I think Kalista and Senna in these level one skirmishes are incredible but T1 is so ready and the fact that they're able to secure the Raptors ends up being really big. And look at all these extra autos from Guma and Karia. They're just poking them down. Missing it's tunked, the range. Tunked fully out by the double range bottom lane to double AD carry and then owner says you know what we're going in for this. He all ins. Goes for the Flash W, they get the first blood plus the extra one. And missing, dying there with his Flash up as well is really painful because that is so much gold going over very early on to Guma's Caitlyn and providing T1 with the early lead that they're looking for in this lane. Also, Knight blowing his Flash here in mid lane for the Orianna might be painful. Faker's gone for the Hail of Blades. Um, this, is, this has been a rune choice that actually hasn't won that many games technically. Faker was actually the guy that did win the game with Halo Blades. Uh, but it does also put out more pressure early on in the lane phase than the Conqueror style. And now with Knight also not having Flash, maybe there are some owner angers here for the Maokai, setting up the saplings around mid lane for Faker to really play aggressively into Knight. For now, 369 on this top side of the map, knowing he's relatively safe to do this as Kanavi is shadowing him in the river. And just clear out that wave, stay out of the individual 1v1 with Zayas. Owner moving in, laying down a little bit of vision here, gonna contest this red. Remember, because he got that level two, because he got that oh, first man. camp, he really wasn't hampered at all from that level one. Oh, the oh is it gonna time out? No, nope, we'll him. spot him. And uh, there is double prio here for T1. Walking away, 700 health going in, oh! not quite able to get it! Owner! Konami! Early smite, owner. Early smite there. Kanavi very happy to be able to grab that one back. That's really big. A lot of time invested there for owner without any real payoff. And 369 sees the enemy jungler. He's like, hey, I can proxy another wave with no problem. Ensuring that he is able to maintain this early CS lead, this build up over Zeus. We got the ARAM Championships, we got Farming Simulator on the top <laughs> side. This game has it all. Now we got a Maokai gank in the bot lane. Ruler has to be careful, just barely gets around the trap. But owner stepping forward, the cleanse isn't going to be enough. Walking in, one more out of the kick. We end up the flash in. Carrier seals the deal. Missing, trying to fire back with Carrier. Blinking. Oh, Kanavi. Kanavi, looking for one. That's one. Knocked. We've seen the scene in Arcane, you know exactly how this goes. Flash in, hits him with the Fisticuffs double kill. Going over to Kanavi. Really good timing there for Kanavi to go back in. He waits out the barrier from Karia, then flashes in, gets the extra kill. Kanavi pulling this one back for JDG. And that's the gold lead, 41 now evaporated, thanks to that timing from Kanavi. It's really critical for Kanavi trying to save the game plan here for JDG because that would have been devastating if Ruler went down, both Summoner spells blown by Ruler as well, without any repercussions there, it would have 
greatly diminish the chances they could actually stack their dragons. On the flip side, though, Gumayushi actually was able to pick up so much more CS and maintained his summoners. Did not have to flash here as we take another look at that play. Okay, so owner trying to chase them, pass the trap here, goes in, he gets the cleanse out first, and then Karia waits for his timer, flashes forward to get the extra kill, but Kanabi, we know, coming around the outside, and he picks up the first one on owner really nicely, then waits patiently, wards in the brush, even though there is a control ward there, flashes in as soon as the barrier's over to get number two. Missing flashing in the backside there, just to be careful. <laughs> Ultimately, a bit of, it's just kind of a mess on the bottom side. Oof, with some good kills traded back and forth there. Zayas level six, but at a man disadvantage, we'll make it back. Dark and Blade just locking down Kanavi briefly as Zayas will just return to the top side already. 369 picking up some Thorn Mail. Bramble Vest, Brad. It's like, it feels like the first moment that we've had uh, in this game where there is nothing happening, where we have a little bit of downtime. I don't know how long it's going to last because Owner is already wrapping around. Does get spotted in a second here by Ruler, but. There's Get no downtime. Angle. There is only fighting. Owner on the bottom side of the rift. Carrier will back away. Just fighting to gain control of the lane. They've got no jungler in the area, but Missing just going to do what he can to clear out the saplings and try to protect the control ward. Will get taken away here. And you can tell, they had no idea where Kanavi was because that Ash Hawk shot went to go over their own Raptors and Krugs to see if Kanavi was counter jungling at the time, but Kanavi was on his way down towards that fight, down towards the bottom side. So, owner has to get out of there. They were very unsure uh, and definitely respecting this two kill Vi now. And after game number one, where JDG was really put too far behind for them to showcase their team fighting, this game looking a whole lot different, right? Actually staying on uh, even gold here early on in the game. And it's not like that top side isn't gonna be a menace when it comes to team fights. Kanavi on the way out, missing getting slowed up. First the Black Mist coming through just to make sure he can get out to safety. I think it's an excellent point. Kanavi especially against a hawk shot, against the Maokai Sapling, still able to find those kills on the bottom side uh, is a big credit to him because it could be so tricky to remain undetected in the jungle against a composition like this. Level 6 though, taking over for Guma. Yeah. While there are so many stars on JDG, Kanavi's been the one on the team for the longest with his four-year tenure here and is going to be a key component this time around, especially those junglers looking for their level 6s. Oh, 369 quite have the angle to get the pull back there. All right, walking up and grabbing the honey fruit. We'll be spotted on the vision, but just there for a little bit of extra laning sustain. As 369 is going to do his best to pick up these creeps. Has the biscuit, so no concerns on the mana front. And I think the Kanavi angle is, is something that people have to appreciate and respect, because this is a guy that after his time in Griffin, it was kind of a question mark as to where his career was going to go. And those initial years on JDG weren't nearly as glamorous as this one has been. So the fact that he has stuck with his team through thick and thin, that the organization has stuck with him to reach this point against T1 it is a testament to the tenacity of that player. There was also just, uh, even when JDG wasn't nearly as successful as they have been throughout this year, already so much talk amongst a lot of LCK junglers as well about the creativity. A lot of early meta developments were spearheaded by this player. And he is the one with the most gold on JDG right now. And we'll see what impact he can have in the skirmishes. Because the follow-up CC on, on uh, JDG is, I think, a really big part of how they want to play out these early skirmishes. All right, owner should get level 6 off these wolves, I think, for the Maokai. And Kanavi's already starting up Rift Herald, so it should be a dragon trade for the Rift Herald. I don't think T1 want to fight anything up on the top side of the map, and they'll be happy actually to trade these objectives. But that does mean JDG will have the extra pushing power and try and snowball here. Big gold injection from this Rift Herald and already to a very rich Vi. They're gonna have to make a very big Vi ultimate plus Shockwave play to make this worthwhile. Also do note, and this is something in the last game Zeus got away with Chris Kawan, he was mega fed as old, the gank. From 369, pushing for a bit more, but nothing gonna come from it, just an alt for alt trade. Stepping up, Kanavi ready to go. Just baiting out the Dark and Blade, however. Zayos to clear the wave and should be fine. 
But as I was saying earlier, um, the fact that Zeus is going for this full lethality build, as owner does get spotted, uh, there is almost teleport available for Knight, so we'll see if a response is available here. Kanavi also making his way over. Just the fact that in the 1v1, Zeus is going to have so much less pressure than he did in the last game, it's going to force T1 to meet, uh, meet JDG in straight up team fights. Biggest power spike on the whole map right now, though, is Kanavi finishing Divine Sunder with his two early kills and his Rift Herald gold and Vi ultimate ready. The power is in his hands here to turn the tides for JDG. Zayas waiting to the last second to cancel the back. <laughs> Does it now. Unstoppable from Cassante. Still gets pulled back. Not going to cost 369 much of anything, just delaying the recall. Trying to mess up the timings here from the side of JDG. Good news for T1 is that while it's not as dominant, Uma and Carrie have been able to grab a couple plates on the bottom side, the power of this pushing bottom lane. It will get harder, though, as we get later into the game, missing 38 souls. Every 20 souls, he's been getting 15 AD, 20 range, 10% crit chance. So despite the fact that he has almost no gold income as a support, Senna will become a threat eventually. Outside of specifically the Ash, though, and even Ash obviously has a lot of value, but I do think she falls off as we get toward the late game. Oh, Arrow. A nice back cancel there. Thank you for that carry out. Um, the rest of T1 still is a really big late game menace, but you are meeting JDG in their biggest comfort zone, which is going to be the team fights. We'll see if T1 is actually able to stack up the early Drakes here with a Mountain and Hextech already out of the pool. We'll see what ends up being the soul, because if JDG is able to snowball with the use of that Herald, might be tough for T1 to find a similar grasp of control as they did in the last game. And that recall interrupt is actually really big for T1. It's going to allow Guma to get at least one turret plate here with Karia helping him push. Maybe they go for two. Maokai on the way as well. Cleanse up and available for Ruler. Missing has to be careful about stepping too far forward. Faker in the area as well. The flash. The potential to make some plays, but two. the response. Harold being dropped in the mid lane, at least two plates for Knight. If they want to commit, instead they're moving down into the river to maybe try to leverage the power of Kanavi here. Again, his power spike's pretty limited. Obviously stronger than the Righteous Glory. Flash out from Kanavi. Traded for the ultimate of Faker. Overall, very positive trade for T1 coming to the next fight. All right, let's see if that does get punished. There's a slight bounty. The only bounty in the game is on Kanavi's head, so no flash. Slightly higher chance here for T1 to collect it. But the mid turret plates kind of making up for the bottom side push there that T1 got. So JDG getting some money happily over there into the hands of Knight. The Orianna Shockwave in their hands this time around. See what they can do with it because Kanavi's going to help him get another turret plate. They're alting. No one there to body block for missing. That could be disastrous. Zayas behind, Zayas behind as well. Kanavi gonna be in trouble. Ruler now trying to run for his life, kiting this one out. Zayas keeping his eyes on the Callistas. Kanavi in the backside will find one. Knight with the shockwave at least managing to lock down the trade kill. This is huge for JDG. They did not teleport 369 in. That is a teleport cooldown for Zeus and a one for one with both junglers going down. 369 gets to stay topside to get turret play money. Not only that, the, the shutdown went to Karia. You'd really much rather have that on Faker or Gumayushi, but instead, JDG able to trade one for one, kill the, the shutdown rather, doesn't even go to the ideal target for T1, and they're able to get plates towards the top side for 369 just before they fall off. Patience from Zayas there on the return to lane. 369 waiting in the darkness, hoping to get more out of that trade. But we can take a look at how this play starts out. The aggressive use of the ultimate from owner. Yeah, they use the Maokai ult to lock them up. Zayas with the teleport down, and then they go for it. But look how they're able to focus down owner on the other side. As a nice dodge there on the Ash arrow. Goes one for one, and with the extra rend, slow down here, they're able to kite away keep T1 without getting too much damage dealt to themselves here on the side of JDG. And that means we're going to get some extra power spikes coming in as well. Knight very happily finishing up his Ludens as is Faker. Now the one advantage that T1 was able to get is that summoners are now down on Ruler and missing. Uh, Ruler still has his cleanse, but outside of that does need to play a lot safer. And I think T1 are going to try and leverage that into getting the second dragon here. Uh, we'll see if JDG have a response, because do not forget, if Zeus answers towards top, 369 can TP, but if Zeus doesn't answer, 369 might just be able to get a turret and further build the gold lead for JDG. You can take a look at the MasterCard lane economy. It's the mid-jungle for JDG versus the bot lane of T1 when it comes to relative leads, but T1 
control mid prior, which means they control setup on the Drake, and it looks like JDG are going to respect that. Not looking to contest this one whatsoever. Do not have the vision, do not have the members in position. It will be a trade of the top lane tier one for the second Drake of the game to T1. Infernal Rift coming through. Yeah, the top lane bar going to go a little bit further in the favor of 369 after that one. But it's not going to change too much how they want to play uh, their team comp here. JDG actually have a trailing play in the works here with Kanavi coming down to look to pressure Faker off. Kanavi is so damn strong. The Maokai not going to be affected because it's just not soon enough. Flash out from Faker is clean, though. Knight takes at least one tower shot. The pushback Faker trying to make it out, and he will survive. JDG walking away empty-handed. No real wave to play around on that bot lane tower for now. We'll be able to, I think, at least get some damage down on the turret. Do get Faker's flash, but he does get away with his life. We'll see if T1 is able to find a counter punch or if that is just gonna be it. 369 continuing to shove as well. Should be able to get a lot of damage down towards this turret. And now Herald being started up by T1. This is looking to be their answer. But 369, he is getting more and more gold. He gets top tower. He gets bottom tower. Clearly after last game, JDG putting more effort into getting resources into the back pocket of 369. Staying even in CS, but getting so many plates, getting so much gold overall. Finishing his mythic item as well. T1 uncontested again. They took Drake. They've now taken the second Herald. It's been a smooth game so far in terms of objective control. And the big thing here for me is that it's Infernal, right? It's Infernal, Sawyer, and T1 are up on Drake's, but they are falling further and further behind in gold. Faker doesn't have Flash or his ultimate available. It means there's a huge importance on getting your vision control leading up to the Dragons, and whoever is going to be able to get there first. Because Guma Yushi, with the Caitlyn traps here, trying to get two Dragon first and cut off one of those angles, line up the traps, make it so much more difficult for this hard engaged comp of JDG that's much shorter range to actually close that range and get there engaged. Uh, T1, definitely, a lot of the prep work will really benefit them around the Dragon setup. But JDG, they've got a lot of angles to be able to force with. Arrow going between the goalposts there. Not going to quite find the angle. Carrier clearing out as much vision as he can with the Umbral Glaive. Umbral Glaive versus Umbral Glaive. Vision denial, very easy for both sides in this game. But T1 just keeping the sieging pressure oh, in their favor. 369's on the way. Long flank. Very long flank. T1 now going to need to start backing up. Owner stepping forward, using the ultimate. Maybe hoping to just generate space for the rest of the team as Missing's going to pick up more and more souls. But the mid lane tower still standing for JDG. Both sides seemingly gearing up for a fight. Cannot be getting lower and lower. Ace in the hole will connect. Missing, or Kanabi rather, going to need to back soon. Not really a lot to play for in the mid lane, to be fair. Both teams seemingly just grouping up, ready for the potential of a fight. Zayas in the side lane, clearing out here in T1, trying to push their vision line forward. And you highlighted it, Kobe. Both sides want vision control, but T1 get it so much more easily with the Ash, with the Maokai saplings. Exactly. That setup does so much. When every brush has a sapling in it, <laughs> and then every piece of land that's not a brush has a Caitlyn trap on it, yeah. it becomes very annoying to navigate. Something we haven't talked about as much yet, we are starting to kind of see here is that owner is Maokai historically just hasn't been that good sitting on like a 42% win rate over the year and particularly at the start of the year where the Maokai Sejuani trade was basically every single jungle matchup uh, owner Sejuani great able to play that very consistently particularly when he can sync up with his top side but his Maokai hasn't been super impressive and I think that that is going to be a lot of the team fighting power 41 the arrow again doesn't find anyone as owner owner Going to dodge the abilities there, use the phase rush to make it out to safety. Vault Breaker doesn't connect. T1 holding on for now, but JDG just fighting, just poking their heads into the enemy jungle. We'll see the sapling and the brush there as Faker returns to the top side just to clear out and keep pressure in the favor of T1. Yeah, as far as the Maokai does go, I actually do really like the full tank phase rush style Ma uh, Maokai since they do have an Azir on their team already. Don't need the extra AP damage from a Demonic. He might have a hard time here working his way through all these JDG members in the brush, though, lying in wait, just trying to catch any T1 member who gets close to this dragon setup. Because JDG, no, that is a number one goal for them, trying to keep T1 out of that setup. Certainly is. The other big thing to keep your eye on is item spikes. One item and some change for just about everybody on the rift. See if anyone can hit their second item before we get into this third Drake. Baron on the table in 30 seconds, but I can't imagine either side will rush it. Instead, the Infernal, the center of attention, nearly, nearly perfectly synced timers on the major objectives. 
And it doesn't look like we're gonna see any other major item finishes. Ruler backed, but just a pickaxe and a longsword. Guma also just shy of his second item. And right now, T1 are moving into the river. Uh, the, the vision control still not too bad here for JDG. We'll see 369 also on a possible flank angle. Ace in the hole used early just to chunk out Knight. And again, this is the struggle of the JDG lineup is how do you gain control? No vision control, traps blocking one entrance, only one entrance left, meaning owner has perfect setup for an ulti to kick this fight off. Arrow gonna connect first, Kanavi now locked up, brings it back into the rest of the team. Owner in the midst of everybody, and Zayo's now on the way in, Kanavi's still standing for now. Ruler pulling back his support, and now JDG looks to turn, Unstop boys, 369. They know that they've gotten what they came for. JDG now backing off, do not want to overextend in the play. This is huge. The entire front line from D1 has been deleted. JDG, what a successful turnaround in that fight. It's Kanavi with the in-the-moment decision to turn around on owner and with the cooldowns down, no front line available. T1 isn't going to be able to get themselves to a soul point for this Infernal Soul, and JDG take control. TP back in means first tower or tower in the mid lane in favor of JDG as well as the Infernal Drake. Faker going to be forced to run. And again, JDG, a massive threat. The later you get in the game, the more clean this team feels, and they're proving it again here on the back of the play from Kanavi. I have to feel like that was a bit of a blunder from T1 frontline, just charging in instead of trying to play off of their extra range, their, their saplings, their traps, their, their, their poke. As soon as they get this Ash Arrow in the tri brush, they've got the pop, and they go for it. Owner all ins, and then they flash him back deeper into the team, and then Vi Ultimate keeps Owner here just long enough. So even as he flashes, they're able to get the kill as uh, Ruler is able to rend him down. And particularly against the Orianna, you just you can't try and fight through that, right? Not even. In 369 joined the fight. At that point, I think it was already mostly over. But just the threat of that Orianna ultimate should be enough to dissuade T1. They try to bite off way more knowing how important this dragon is and end up paying for it dearly. And you talked about the Sejuani for owner being the superior choice room over the Maokai. And the big difference between these champions is oftentimes Maokai's engage tools are much better reactively than they are proactively. You saw it there. Yes, you hit so many people with the ultimate, but it's a very short root duration when you're that close, and your entire team completely zoned away by JDG's backline threats, unable to follow up on what initially might have looked like a pretty good engage. And, and JDG's comp also is so strong when they can absorb an initial blow and then re-engage, particularly with the Senna and the Orianna. It makes it really, really hard for T1 if they don't take down a target immediately. Yeah, T1 definitely want to play it slower than they just played the last one Yeah, uh, without rushing in so much. But because they did, and the extra gold that has gone over to JDG now off of that mid turret plate and the dragon here for JDG, they're in such a, a much better position here to actually pull off this hard engage and chase them down. They've got Kanavi plus Knight combination ready. It's time to see what form are JDG in. We know this is their bread and butter, these states of the game where it seems close, where they've got these two item spikes and there are big objectives to fight around. T1 showed us what they can do with an early game lead with a massive advantage in their favor. If T1 are ready to fight fire with fire, to take it to these late game team fights, to out execute a seemingly un out executable late game team fighting team. And really big here as well is that Zeus hasn't actually been able to find the backline yet. And as we can see, 369 can just get Pry on every single wave because Zeus doesn't win the one run. Didn't even go for Eclipse, right? This is just full on Dusk Blade together with Edge of Night. So his ability to chew through a. Uh, I don't know how much armor 369 is sitting on, but it's going to be way too much for this Atrix to deal with. Makes it really hard for T1 to gain control of the side waves. He's in the hole, not going to lead to much effect there. Command Protect. Was the body block from Kanavi, keeping missing healthy. It's not an AP Maokai, as highlighted earlier, so the sapling's annoying, most certainly, but more about the slow and the vision control than any actual damage. As Deus using the Scryer's Gloom just to see if there's anything spotting him. Another aggressive engage here. Carry a locked up, though. Knight finds the Shockwave onto one. The TP now coming in. That's 369 to the backside. Looking to isolate the rest of the team. One kill already going down. Guma off the rift. Carrier running for his life. Kanavi continuing to step forward. Pullback coming in. JDG have brought T1 
Wood into the meat grinder, and they are tearing through them effortlessly. But Faker now looking to fire back. Carrier bleeding on the back line, cannot do much more. JDG have taken the exchange. And Kanavi going down means that JDG, I still see the pink swords bound. They might have tried because owner is dead, doesn't have smite, and they do have the rend available. Exactly. Rend is going to be more damage. Double TP though. They might just want to force that out and back off. TP coming. Zayas. Potential for a hero moment from Zayas from Caria. Can they turn this one back? A lot of blinking health bars, a lot of cooldowns missing. Zayas, no flash. Objective getting lower and lower. The Ren should just be able to finish it. They will grab the Baron, but T1 sticking around in the meantime, hoping to take the fight. Missing getting lower and lower, but he just got too much range. Too many souls doing too much damage. Faker goes in, but he gets absolutely Ooh. nothing. And JDG are one of the best teams at using Baron buff to end games. Let's see what they can get done with it. They're gonna have a redirect all the way back to the fountain, missing, going to brush that one off. But immediately, we saw Orianna, Knight there, went up to the top side to push the wave, and Orianna, Knight, right here, gets a shockwave onto Caria, almost killing him, forcing the flash, forcing Faker to come over and peel, and this is where you get another counter-engage from JDG after T1 tried to chase. And the big thing there is the moment that Guma is gone, there just isn't going to be enough damage. 369 able to isolate owner, which even though uh, we do see Kanavi go down, ends up being fine for JDG. They have the confidence to just trust this Kalista and the fact that they still have a front. And line. it was so close there too. You, Zeus almost killed Knight, almost took down the Orianna, evening the kills up there but he just barely was unable to. Knight was able to escape. Then they forced down the Baron. Missing there with the flash forward. Faker trying to take down Ruler, but then he's in the middle of all of JDG. <laughs> you can see the brief moment of joy in the replay there. JDG very much in control of this game. Gonna grab their second Infernal Drake. See what they can get done with the Red Bull Baron power play. Already 2.5K in their favor. Expecting to break down some tier twos here, but again, a lot of great defensive tools from the side of T1 to at least slow this push down. All right, buying time for the split push here. Even though they're sacrificing turret pushes here to Baron, trying to get something back with those objective bounties popping off. And if you're T1 at this stage, you're just going to do everything you can to hold on. One minute left on the Baron. You already took game one in style, just trying to hold on to some hope in this game too. Is JDG again? This is their comfort zone. Pressing this lead forward, taking these fights, these confident re-engages. Ace in the hole again. Good damage onto missing, but you can heal up a lot of that. Ace get two? Nah, okay. Uh, particularly because it's it's Lefelli Senna, right? So he, he's going to fire two Qs. He's going to be completely fine, and the damage hasn't actually been that meaningful. And from this point on, JDG with the Red Bull Baron power play should be able to, as we've seen already, 3k gold lead. Uh, additionally, should be able to set up with the map control that they have now to uh, get themselves to that Infernal Soul Point. And there will be no one on T1 that can stand up to the amount of damage that's going to be output by this JDG comp in the team fights. Particularly once Knight finishes his death cap. That's what that's I was gonna, looking at. That's lights out. <laughs> that's what I was looking at. Double needlessly large rods already for him. Going for a recall now. Might even have... I'm fine, money. All right, they're going to continue to split push here. Sending 369 down to bottom side to catch Faker's attempt to get another objective bounty. You see Faker going for the bottom side turret objective bounty there, while the rest of JDG push top. Should be pretty easy to tear through that tower at this stage of the game. So 369 there to pick up the CS, but won't be able to stop the tower take. JDG not afraid to walk up. 99 souls on missing, about to have 100 extra range here. So you can continue to rain down auto attacks, rain down Qs, picking up so many souls as the tower drops there. Baker, though, taking the Scuttlecrab as well, just trying to guarantee a little bit of vision control over the area. Two and a half minutes on the Baron, three minutes on the Infernal Drake. Not soul for either side, but arenas for both teams to pick fights. And now T1 is in a position where your only way of trying to get back in this game is Caria hitting an arrow, but if you look at the targets, really hard to consistently hit many of the members. 369 doesn't care, can catch any arrow. Kanavi can easily get out of the way. Uh, same for Ruler. Uh, or you need to have Owner go in, but particularly with the build he's gone for and how far he's behind, he's not going to be able to take the brunt of that damage. So really, T1 just hoping that 369 overextend into a play, and there's a moment for our Faker or Gumayushi can take over a team fight. Meanwhile, with all this money that JDG and Kanavi especially have gotten, is a Guardian Angel completed for the Vi. So 
he, as a jungler, can go straight headlong oh, yeah. into the rest of the team, deliver that shockwave to the back line, and still be able to get up afterwards. Same can be said for Cassante uh, with the Gargoyle Stone Plate. 369 has been a very rich Cassante split pushing, getting these outer towers down for his team. And it's definitely going to be a problem for T1 as the JDG engage is massive. Yeah, and for T1, you, you've kind of tried to pull the trigger twice. Owner throwing the ulti over the wall, owner going in on the Viant. Both times it's worked against you, and you're kind of out of attempts. If you fumble one more engage, if JDG get the better of you in one more fight, it feels like it's just game over here in game two of the series. So has to count against the nerves of T1, knowing that the next one needs to be flawless if you want to mount a comeback. And that that's that's I'd argue that they've already run out of lives, right? Like the health bars are blinking. <laughs> Uh, and particularly with the amount of summoners that are available for JDG, I just, it's really hard to imagine a scenario where someone like Ruler, for example, gets caught at the start of a fight because he has so much innate safety. Missing can be pulled back by Ruler as well, as Knight does now finish his death cap. Gotta imagine that Baron and Soul Point next on the table for JDG. Yeah, I mean, Kanavi, the Vi has a three level lead over the Maokai owner here. Uh, it is it is definitely going to be a massive difference as far as this front line is concerned. And guess what? Baron and Dragon, very close to both spawning here. Only 10 seconds away on the Baron. JDG have teleport ready for both their solo laners. So they can pressure the side lane while also then drawing over to the objective. Our site Trinket keeping information on the Baron. Baker using the passive there to just try to get mid control. Again, all about this priority. Carry of fishing with the arrow it will not connect. Casual 226 heal from the Senna Q. That's fun. JDG, again, they have their choice. They have control right now, but T1 playing more up to the Baron. Not worried about third Drake for JDG. Clearly much more worried about losing control oh, on the Baron it. side. Kanavi going in. Immediate start of the fight. Baker now locked up the pie. Oh. Does so much damage. Kanavi's early game lead put to good use here. The GA now coming out. T1, can they fight back? Zayus leaping in will get Kanavi in the end. One for one thus far. Zayus going back under the Azir Tower. The rest of T1 now need to barrel into the fight, but it's eyes on Knight. Can he get more damage down? 369 in the midst of everybody. Oh. And he's going all out into the back line. Only the support left standing. Look at that. They're going to push straight down mid. And with 280 carries, there is no way that the Nexus isn't going to fall in JDG. Come back with a resounding victory here in game number two. Game one about owners early passing about the team play, but game two has been about Kanavi and the dominance of JDG in fights. But that said, as good as the fight was, as favorable as the fight was, JDG do not think that they have time to close the game out and will set their sights on the objective <laughs> A little instead. ahead of myself. <laughs> yeah. They should still we've, be fine. We've seen them end a lot of games really quickly. Baker is up though. They're going to respect it. Pull back and grab Baron Buff instead. But JDG, such a massive lead after that T1 wipe here with the Baron Buff. Baron Empowered Recalls will allow them to reset too. And you see T1 trying to make a rush towards this Dragon. I wonder what Kanavi has to say about it. Knight here is up as well. And they're just going to use the Baron offensively. Pressure immediately, teleport back out. They already have mid inhibitor down. They're not going to let T1 any window to go for a Dragon. Yeah, really good map read here from JDG. Do you know T1, given that the Baron is being taken by JDG, is naturally going to try and contest that objective. Not going to be the case. 369, I don't think he really cares. Oh, and he, the arrow. he, to me, is the pivotal part, right? He had such a rough rumble game in game number one. And this Cassante is what we expect to see coming into this series. Firing back certainly in game two, got more support, got more time alone to farm up. And you can see why it's considered the best team fighting top laner in the world. It's been such a menace on the back line in these exchanges. Kanavi, no GA available, but still damn tanky. Missing has to be careful, though. As much damage as he does, he's still incredibly squishy. Kanavi threatening, JDG threatening, just trying to force these waves forward. Maybe get another inhibitor on the top side. The wave's not quite synced. Bot wave not there. 369 again. Lives to body block Ace in the hole. And it's so hard here to kill 369. Guma doesn't have a Lord Dumb, so it's only Faker that maybe eventually can chew through. Air on to Kanavi. JDG backing away. They don't want to overstay for the fight. But the Shockwave, a looming threat from Knight. Level 17, Death Cap, Shadow Flame. P and Kanavi work together. It's a death sentence for T1, no doubt. 
JDG just backing off. They got what they came for, two inhibitors. <laughs> now, finally, they will turn their attention to this Drake. The map is theirs. They'll do things when they so please. And 369 doesn't take damage. <laughs> I think doesn't care. I basically was gaining health but <laughs> during that. But it is going to be the secure of all the neutral objectives. The two inhibitors down. JDG methodical here. Missing will take exactly one soul from the Drake. Finds it canonically incorrect <laughs> that it drops two. All right, return to the bottom side. Keep up the Baron empowered pressure. Gamiyushi trying his, his best here to put up these Caitlyn traps. Put a stop to the onslaught. But He's JDG overwhelming. Ruler off to the side. Unafraid, carry a arrow back up. Final in hit. Again, ball breaker charged every time. Kanabi goes for the angle. T1 forced to back up just a little bit more. But it's just slow. It's methodical. It's controlled. JDG, Knight pushing in the bottom side. Double cannon minions. One will be cleared away. 23 seconds left on the Baron. Can they break open this bot lane tower? Traps are there. 369 solo zoning off as meanwhile, Kanabi just walks in with the Baron empowered minions just to threaten the Nexus. JDG, their chokehold on T1, and they're starting to squeeze T1. Not a lot of options left, but the arrow going wide. Potentially the last glimmer of hope. Now fading in this game, too. Missing, taking a big chunk of damage here. No wave. T1 still able to clear it. Finally, bot wave now coming in. It feels like an inevitability, but it's not over till it's over. T1 ready for one potential final fight. Zay is poking off to the side still. Has a bit more armor pen now. Can't start to hurt 369. Ulti coming out from owner Faker. Looking for an angle here. Just gonna get a bit more poke down. But again, JDG are too composed. They're too controlled. They will not take the bait. They will walk away knowing that victory is inevitable as long as they do not make a mistake. And, and this is about as secure as you can go, right? You want to ensure that you don't somehow give an opportunity to T1 to get a miraculous team fight, like a multi-man shuffle into Zayus, uh, knocking people up, trying to blow up your backline. Because as you say, as long as you don't do that, as long as you play it out safe, you are going to get Infernal Soul in about two minutes. Yep. You'll be able to get the uh, the Baron as well. And you can win this game without ever fighting, which I, as an LSK caster, really appreciate. And what we've learned, if nothing else, is that the Golden Road has some pretty strict speed limits here in these late <laughs> late game well, scenarios. I think, I think you, uh, with three inhibitors down, you can just go into their base, and as long as you respect the engage and the Ash Arrow, you should be able to just use the pressure to wear them down. T1 are going to get very desperate here. They have no territory to work with. With double super minions coming down every single lane is a multiplicative effect. They buff each other up. You just have to wait in there and not give an engage opportunity. Have to be a little bit careful about that one. The good news is... But is behind, they're going for it, T1. Looking for the angle, missing, could be in trouble here. Zayas on the backside, looking to lock up, trying to take down a bit more damage. Infernal Chain's not gonna be very effective. Knight going golden, has a bit more space. Kanavi now on the way in. In goes Kanavi, and that should just be it. T1 holding on for dear life. Faker uncontested on the backside. Gumichi going golden, but he is going to go down. The flash out will not be enough. GA up just in time to keep Kanavi standing. It's a clean ace in the base of T1 as JDG will move on and close out game two. It's a textbook game from JDG. And to me, it's the top side that made the difference. 369 with a much better game, but Kanavi in particular, the hero of the early game, him and Knight securing these mid-game team fights, and once JDG has a hold, they don't let go. Beautiful re-engages there from JDG when T1 try and make that pick and try brush. They turn it around on them, they get the dragon, they get the extra money back in. They punish these T1 moves. And two strong wins from both sides. Different wins, most certainly, but we're gonna have to see what it looks like as we get closer and closer to game three for now. We're gonna send it to a quick break. When we